Hello again. This is going to be kind of an ad hoc video because I filmed most of it while I was trying to fix a problem. I woke up this morning and I tried to work a satellite pass. I was transmitting on VHF. I believe this was either RS-44 or maybe XW3. And I had like 3 to 1 VSWR or worse on my VHF side on transmit. And it wasn't outputting full power because of it. The ICOM 9700 was limiting the output probably to protect itself from high VSWR. So there must be some problem somewhere. In this video, I'm going to show how we can use the time domain reflectometer function of the Nano VNA series of products to determine if we need to go outside and fix a problem either with an antenna or the coax connection at the antenna or some point in the coax line, or if there's just a problem with the connector right on the bench and we can just re-terminate it and be good to go. W2AEW has a really good video on this subject that goes into a little bit more detail about what the function is doing, how to use it, some mathematical formulas to set it up correctly for your particular application. But here I'm just going to be showing you my, well, it's not really field, but let's just go pseudo field use of it to determine the problem and help me figure out what I need to do to get my system working again. Without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so I keyed up my radio here on VHF, and I was getting like 3 to 1 SWR, and I generally get a little bit better than that. This is this cable without the yellow is going into the M2 antenna's egg beater on the roof, the VHF one, and the yellow one is the UHF. So, I've got the Nano VNA V2 here. We're going to use this to debug the problem from inside the shack using the time domain reflectometer function. So, first I'm going to have to go in here and clear all of my calibration stuff. And then I'm going to have to set the sweep to something that's going to include the distances that I'm interested in. So right now, I had the sweep set from 100 megahertz to 500 megahertz, and I can see in the upper right corner here that at about the end of that it goes to about 10 meters. Now I now have about a 100 foot co uh, coax run up to the roof. So I need to go to at least 30, 33 meters. So I want to go like, say, 40 meters of total length that I can determine in this transform here. And what this graph is saying is the vertical is the amount of reflection that it's getting, and then the horizontal is a time delay, which based on setting a velocity factor, and I think it takes like 0.7 by default, which is uh, definitely close enough for our purposes here just to determine where the fault is. The vertical high up there shows that there's a reflection and since we have nothing connected that highest reflection is pretty much at just about zero distance here so it was like 102 millimeters so going to 500 megahertz we only got to 10 meters so i guess if we go to like 130 150 megahertz and start down closer say 10 megahertz or 1 megahertz that will get us close readings at the bottom and then all the way up to where we need to be. So go in here and we'll set the stimulus. We'll start at 1 megahertz and we'll stop at 150 megahertz. If you watch W2AEW's video on this topic, he has a mathematical formula that gets you close to what it really is. But we're just checking that as I go to the end of this graph that I would get to at least 33 and we can see I didn't quite make it. So I'm actually going to have to take the stimulus and we're going to go into stimulus, take the stop and move that down a little bit. Let's try just 100 megahertz and see how, how far that goes. You see we got to 41.4 meters. So I'm moving this and it's round about half a meter, a little bit less every time I click the cursor over here. And that's with 101 sweep points. You really don't want to do more than that. At least I found this model of the Nano VNA V2 cannot handle that. If I, if I do like 201 sweep points, this transform won't even work. The whole thing will crash. But there we've got that transform working with the right frequency sweep to get the right distances. And now I'm going to turn the transform off just so we can verify our calibration. And then transform off. Then we'll go ahead and get this calibrated here. Uh, do, do, do. Calibrate. I'm going to grab my sources. Right. 
This is an open circuit. Calibrate and open. And that should be there. Calibrate our load in the center. I'll calibrate, say, short circuit. Now we hit done. We'll save that and save too. And now there we can see our short circuit checks out. Our 50 ohm load checks out. And we'll check our open circuits in the right, right there. Okay. So now I just need a quite obscene amount of coax cable adapters because I'm missing exactly the right ones here. So if I can find all of these, this gets us from SMA to SMA. This gets us SMA to PL259 female, N male to N female, and then there's the cables. So, we'll do a control test first. It's going to plug this SMA cable in here. And we'll go ahead and turn the transform on. Okay. Display. Transform. Transform on. Okay. And now, I know that I have probably a 20 centimeter cable connected to this. And here's at... Zero, it's a little bit down, and then it's saying 40 centimeters, 414 millimeters is its best guess. But our question is really, does where that open circuit reflection is move when we unplug that? Yes, it does. It goes from being literally zero to something that's not exactly zero. So this will get us a very coarse measurement. And now let's try on the good antenna. The UHF one was not giving me trouble, so plug that into the yellow coax. And there we can see, if we trace up where the reflection is, we can see that at a distance of 26 or so meters, it thinks there's a little bit of a return there, and some other stuff around 28 meters. So that's about right. That's somewhere close to 30 meters of cable, and that's being normal. Now I will say, that's plugged into an antenna. I did go up on the roof spoilers, and I unplugged the antenna here, so I know I have an actual open circuit at the end of this line. So what this tells me should be a very strong return at the length of the coax, instead of something that's distorted by not being connected to exactly what I want it to be, which is an open circuit for this coax test here. And this will tell me whether I have a problem with my coax, my connectors, or my antenna. And now... Well, that's round about 25, 26 meters that it thinks to the, the problem point. That's about the correct length for the coax. I'll say that I did kind of tightly curve some of the coax on the roof there. So there may be a coax problem which is causing this. Or it could just be that the antenna has a problem and the coax is fine here. But the key takeaway is yes, we have to be outside messing with stuff, not this connector here, because this connector's showing fine and there's a fault somewhere up in the line. So I'm gonna go up there with a piece of sandpaper and uh, see about fixing the loop elements in their connection to the phasing harness there. Real quick though, we'll turn this transform off. And we'll look at impedance again. And here's the cable that's connected to an open circuit, so this is going to look like some craziness, and it's just going to go all around the Smith chart, because we have a long piece of cable connected as an impedance transformer, terminated in an open circuit right now. And this other one, at 400 megahertz, would be matched, and we're not looking at that frequency, but we can go ahead and look at that real quick, and just check that that's okay. Now, the Nano V and AV2 doesn't have interpolation, so we're going to have to uh, change this. I actually, spoiler alert, have 
some other calibrations in here. Recall number one goes from 100 to 500 and is pretty calibrated. Uh, just check that real quick. This should be our actual open circuit. Yep. So that's calibrated right at the connector on there. We only care about the scalar measurement. We'll plug the UHF antenna in and then take a look at 400 some megahertz here. All right. Looking like a little bit of a train wreck, but we're really mostly interested in four hundred and thirty five megahertz here four thirty four fifty ohms minus eighteen db so that antenna's fine there's something wrong with the antenna on the roof i'm gonna go fix that and uh, uh you're not gonna record that because uh, i don't want to fall and die hello cat hi Came back downstairs and the cat is here. This is the UHF antenna. Just to check we got good measurements off here. Negative 16.74 dB of return loss. So that's pretty good. Got this set to 146 megahertz and plugged into my VHF side. And now we got minus 13.12 dB. So that antenna is all happy again. So I changed two things initially. I took the loop contacts out and I sanded them a little bit. You don't want to go too much because I'm pretty sure those wires are copper plated steel. We want the contacts on the copper just a little bit and then I retightened everything there and then I tried spinning it to space out the VHF egg beater from the disc cone that's about 10 feet away from the center of the boom for the egg beaters which are currently oriented so the boom is perpendicular to the ridge line of the roof I'll show you a drone picture I switched it so it was the other way with the VHF antenna away and I thought that that might have an impact on the SWR but that had a pretty insignificant impact had dad sit down here and read the return loss to me as I spun it around a little bit and ended up keeping it the same way so now the VHF egg beater is facing back towards the backyard and the UHF is facing forward and then uh, we've got everything working hunky-dory again so that's how we use a TDR to verify it's not the coax and justify climbing on the roof so this is catastrophe averted on VHF and our UHF is still working if you made it to the end of the video thanks for watching please don't forget to like share and subscribe if you dislike the video please do hit that dislike button and make sure that you have the extension installed to restore the YouTube dislike button absolute travesty and uh, feel free to leave your opinion in the comments 73.